Hello everybody and welcome back to Jasbo Simple Art. Got a new one for you. Uh, it's going to be a difficult one, but I hope you hang in there for it. Also, uh, I've got a little medical update for those of you who's interested in this. It is kind of a, a long video, so just hang in there. It's, I think it's going to be a two-parter. So, um, welcome back to Jasbo Simple Art. Hope you like it.
Hello everybody and welcome back to Jasbo Simple Art. Today I'm going to try to rescue, show you here, try to rescue this uh, cabin. I started this uh, the last yesterday or whenever it was, but anyway, um, I've kind of blown the angle, blown the color, blown everything according to what I wanted to do. So today I'm going to try to bring it back to life and try to correct those errors. Um, so just hang with me and let's see what we can do.
Hello everybody and welcome back to Jasbo Simple Art. Third day I'm going to be working on this. It's a slow process. It's such a big cabin, bigger than I planned on it being, that uh, I'm going to put a lot of detail, a lot of fine detail that you would expect on a close-up uh, picture like this. So it's going to be tricky. Uh, health updates. Uh, back to the doctor, I think it was last week. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I even informed you of that, but uh, after the, the uh, CAT scan and the MRI on my neck, uh, I don't have the dish disease in my neck, which was a big fear. Although, it's still not good, uh, besides the fusion I've already had, uh, the stenosis is really serious, they say. It's serious condition, stenosis. You don't know what stenosis is. It's swelling, more or less, on the spinal cord. It's pressure by disc, um, things like that that push in, extend into the spinal space. Uh, this pretty much sounds like what it was before my back surgery. But I tried to get them to locate the actual um, disc that was involved and what it told me or what they told me was <laughs> it's not defined it's just a severe stenosis in the cervical spine which to my doctor that meant all of them except for the one that they used I believe that was the three to four Use. I'm not sure which one connects to the vision. Um, I know my eyesight has really gone bananas. That's the reason why I'm not wearing glasses today because there's only one lens that works. The other one where I had the two eye surgeries, actually, yeah, two eye surgeries, um, it's pretty much shot. And these glasses were bought probably five, six years ago. And that one lens on that eye is, at that time, was about $350. So now, it's probably a lot more. Um, and Medicare, the only way they will work on eyes, do anything, is after some sort of surgery. Um, I'm left there. Um, what's happened to this eye is there's a lot of scar tissue, a lot of scar tissue. It was the one where in Ohio State University back, I think it was 2006, 2005, somewhere around in here, they did a cornea transplant and it didn't heal correctly. Uh, it didn't go, your cornea it's supposed to go completely when they transfer it it's supposed to go completely around but there's still supposed to be a ridge or an edge around the outside you can't take the whole corner you have to leave a piece and what happened when it healed it healed oblong which really messed up the surgery or the, the the vision the surgery in that eye i came out of that surgery with 2100 vision in that eye came down here and I found an eye doctor that referred me to a surgeon in Hazard. And that was a tough time going back and forth to Hazard. But what it turned out to be, it's his dad's office and his office is actually in um, Louisiana. Uh, so what happened, New Orleans, matter of fact, he flies up here once a month to do the surgical task that his dad needs done. His dad is also a surgeon, but not a defined surgeon who does this kind of eye surgeries. So he, he referred me to his son. His son came up 
and took a look at that eye and said, yeah, uh, what we can do, we can do a corrective surgery on that eye. And we take a little piece out here and a little piece out there, try to get that stretched back to where it's round. The surgery was successful, very successful. I had a little bit better eyesight, but what happened after that surgery is a lot of scar tissue grew. Of course, anytime you have any kind of surgery, you're gonna have scars. They had this procedure, uh, it's, uh, it's done with a laser. It's not a normal laser surgery with, with eyes. This is called a, if I remember right, zag or yag. I think it's yag. And what it does is it burns off that specific uh, scar tissue that does not interfere with anything else. It is just very specific and it's more defined than the other laser surgery. This is a very pinpoint accurate. Well, his dad usually does this when they had me come back to the office. His dad took a look and said, oh, no, 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 I can't do this. This is above my head. So they wasn't sure when his son was coming back, so they put you on a waiting list. And they call you and say, okay, son's coming back, come and see. So I got a call, came back, son wasn't back. Something happened, he couldn't make it. So they put me on that last list again. And here it is all these years later, and I still have not gotten that call. I think they're scared of that. Yeah. See, he didn't only have the scar tissue they had to deal with after his surgery, but they had the scar tissue after the one in Ohio State. It's pretty complicated, according to his dad. It's very complicated. This is scar tissue on top of scar tissue. I think they're scared of it. I really do. I told his dad, I said, I don't care what the outcome is. Okay, because this vision is not good at all. It's almost non-usable. So... If I come out with less vision, that's, that's fine. But evidently they didn't transfer that to the sun or something. Anyway, I've never gotten a call. I called them back. This was probably six months later. And they put me on the list and said, yes, we will call you. I never got a call. After a while of doing this, I finally gave up. I thought, yeah, he's not going to do this laser treatment. So I'm left with all that scar tissue. And now... Medicare, you have to have a referral, you have to have all these things, everything, you know, all the keys crossed and the I's dotted and all that good stuff to get them to do anything. And there's no doctor that's going to take that on. So I'm kind of stuck with this horrible vision right now. With my back, still a big concern. Um, I'm getting weaker. Of course, the weather's not the greatest. I'm hoping this summer that, that I can get out and do things because this time of year, probably through spring with the dampness, uh, the rain, things like that, it makes it really hard on anybody who's got arthritis. And this is treated just like arthritis. Matter of fact, the rheumatologist sent me an answer back. And he put on there in capital letters, do not fall. Like, well, he kept repeating that when I saw him. He first told me, don't fall. I thought he was joking. And I said, I don't plan on it. He was, no, do not fall with his eyes open, blaring like that. And I thought, oh, okay. You need a break. He was very, do not fall. So that was highlighted in capital letters. Do not fall. Uh, the only medicine he could he can recommend beyond what I'm already subscribed from my doctor is um, Tylenol arthritis. Now, I'm taking 800 milligrams of ibuprofen every night and sometimes during the day. My prescription's written three times a day. That's a little bit much and plus too much can lead to liver problems. I'm not worried about that at my age. But on top of that, I'm taking something they call gabapentin, um, which 
helps with these things. I don't know what its full purpose is, but I always prescribe that for the, the dish in my back, for the pain that it causes. And that's, it started out as 600 milligrams. You talk about drug. You didn't know where he was coming or going. You just sitting there going, yeah, okay, that's it. Uh, Rosemary would come in and say, you want to do something? I'm like, yeah, it's okay. She looked at me again. She goes, no, you're not doing anything. <laughs> that's pretty much what the conversation was. <laughs> but anyway, he reduced it down to 300. He prescribed three times a day. I only take it at night until here lately. The last three or four days, I've been taking it three times a day. And you do feel a little groggy, but you still feel the back pain really bad. Yesterday, I ventured into town for the first time since last Tuesday, and I'm paying for it. Oh, believe me, I'm paying for it. Um, something about the seat in our car is very hard. There's no cushion, very little cushion, anything. And it's a sport model, not luxury, which who can afford luxury? But it's a very hard seat. It's a Jeep, and it's a sport model. It's an older Jeep. And the shocks need to be replaced bad. I mean, I'm talking about bad. So every time I come across a bump or something, it's just like, oh, it's holding the back, it's holding the back, it's holding the back. Somebody's hitting me with a baseball bat. So my back was straight. Now it feels like it's starting to curve over, which is going to happen. Uh, sooner or later, I probably won't be able to stand up straight at all. Uh, if I can stand up at all, because that's part of this disease. For some reason, the doctors can't figure out why this is progressing so fast. They've tried to figure it out because DISH takes up to 14 years to really form on the spinal cord. But with me, it's like super fast. Um, when I had my back surgery, I think that was four years ago, something like that. Um, there's no sign of it. Absolutely no sign of it. Here it is, you know, 2024, and I've got a very severe case of it. Uh, I don't know my limitations. I don't know what I'm going to do. When I broke my back before, I was put in a wheelchair. That was back in 2006. And I was supposed to be in and out of it, use a wheelchair most of the time, keep walking, keep the leg muscles up. That's what I was told. When I moved down here, I found out how cold a world it is. When people see you come up in a wheelchair, they will squeeze in front of you. If you're going to Walmart. They see you come and you wouldn't believe how fast they rush to that door. They don't want to get behind somebody slow. That's, that's the whole idea. And it was, it was horrible. I mean, I got treated horrible. And I thought, I've got to get out of this thing. The only way you could have fought that was to build the muscles back up, make them strong muscles, to overdo the problem with my back. It wasn't known at that time that I may have had DISH, but I could have. Because that healed real good, but I was left with a lot of back pain. I know my doctor down here, he said there's a lot of swelling unexplained at that time I didn't have Medicare um, I just had uh, TRICARE VA which <laughs> might as well not have anything they pay what they say 80% of your bill but it's 80% of what they say the bill should be not what the actual bill is so if you go to a surgeon and his you know his treatment his bill or whatever is eight, say $800 just okay VA, well, Tricare will come up and say, that office is worth 200, we're gonna pay you 800, or 20, 80% of that 200. Like, okay, great. Now, what am I gonna do about the rest? That's how Tricare did. So I opted out with that doctor to find out the causes. Could have been then, I don't know. But I did get out of that wheelchair. Um, I did some crazy stuff. Back in Ohio, I used to take aqua therapy. And I don't know if you all know what that is. It's a big swimming pool, well, small swimming pool. It's got a big wave current coming toward you, and you have to fight your way. It strengthens back muscles. The back muscles. Well, I didn't have any of that around here. 
So I took my little walker that I was using. Couldn't take my wheelchair. Let's take my walker. I went to the lake. And this sounds stupid. People saw me and they probably thought I was the biggest idiot in the world. But I went to the beach side, kind of a beach side. They don't really have a formal beach, but where people call the beach. And there I was walking out in the water <laughs> as deep as I could go with my walker. And I had a lot of people staring at me. I had one person ask me, what are you doing? And it took me a while to explain. And he goes, oh, cool. But anyway, every time a boat went by, I fought against its wake. And after doing that for months, I decided to try my cane. I went out there with my cane. Well, you found out one thing real fast. Canes sink. <laughs> in that murky, muddy, whatever's on the bottom of that. It's kind of a... Out there, it's not even sand. It's like fine, broken rock. Uh, but anyway, I had a rough time. I was fighting the cane more than I was anything. But I kept trying. I kept trying. Then I heard... Or I didn't hear. I thought... Something that builds up good leg muscles. That's what I need, leg muscles. And I thought, hmm, I'll get me a bicycle. Wheelchair to walker to cane with some progression. And this idiot that uses a walker in a wheelchair is going to use a bicycle. <laughs> That's what I did. Went to Walmart, bought a bicycle. And I had to learn how to ride a bicycle all over again. Yeah, that was fun. I never did get the hang of it too good. You talk about, you see the old people that go like this on a bicycle. That's me. That was me. I mean, I was wobbling all over the place. I couldn't keep the, the wheel straight, nothing. But I kept that up. I bought me a, I think it was a Swin 26 speed. Put an old person seat on it. I mean, one of those fat ones. Put that on there. Had a lot of sponge. And <laughs> there I went. I remember one time I went across the bridge that had a sidewalk about that big. I mean, you can barely walk on it. You think somebody's going to hit your shoulder going by with a mirror. Well, I found out real fast, do not go across that bridge with a bicycle. Mm -mm. I got halfway across there. My handlebar hit this side. Car came by that side. And after the car left, I mean, I'm wallowing. I almost fell. I'm like, that's it. I walked that sucker back <laughs> off the bridge wobbled my way back home and thought no more ridges only safe roads but I still pedaled that quite a bit then when I moved out here in the country I still rode the bike but a lot of exercise going on there I couldn't use a wheelchair it was not wheelchair I could get out the back door it was only like six inches off the ground very low foundation but the door wasn't wide enough and I was renting, you know, couldn't, couldn't wide, widen it. So I had to leave the wheelchair. And my walker, my cane, and that bicycle is what I used. But anyway, I got away from all that. I got to where I didn't need it. I was walking fine. I lived in an old house that was surrounded by a cattle farm. And right beside my house was this big old hill. And I had... You know, I was, he owned the house, the farmer, so I was allowed to full access to everything. I just started walking that hill. And it was a nice, beautiful hill, nice walk because of his cattle. It was all laid down, so there was no weeds, nothing like that, no brush. You get at the top, and there's just nothing but trees, no undergrowth, oak trees, what have you. And it was beautiful. It took me a while the first time to get up there. But every day, I set out, I didn't care if it took me three hours, I climbed that hill. And I got myself to where I didn't need it. Wheelchair, I didn't need any aids, did nothing. I couldn't run. Couldn't even walk fast, but I walked, you know, everybody thought it was normal. Cool. Okay, so I got beyond that. Now, this has developed, which I thought when I had the back surgery, that... Um, that was going to be it because I, I, at that time, I couldn't do anything. I was working. Um, my leg was giving out. Couldn't stand. My back was killing me. I was, I was in so much pain 
that I had to go home and work one time. They said, you got to see a doctor. So I did. And he referred me to a surgeon and found out I had all that stenosis in my back. He did one surgery. He was giving me options. You can do this one, that one, whichever. And I left it up to him. He chose the worst, I guess. But I also had the bad neck and he wanted to do the back first before I did the neck. So, um, because the neck or the back, you have to lay on your front so they can work on your back. On your neck, you have to lay on your back. And at that time, there's no way I could lay flat. I still can't, but with some aid, uh, pillows popped up, whatever. But that's how they did the surgeries. And I felt so good. I mean, I could do just about anything. I worked on this place. I did everything that I could. This last year was horrible. Didn't know anything was going on, but Sam was down here to help me. Um, my back went you know, I was doing things that I probably shouldn't have done. But anyway, um, time progressed. It got so bad that I told Rosemary, I said, I got to see my doctor. And I told him about it. No matter of fact, when I went to see him, I had this old cane from years ago. I uh, walked in and the cane almost doubled over. I mean, that bad. He looked at me and he goes, you don't need me. You need to cross the street to the emergency room. I want you to go to the emergency room. I thought, okay, this is an emergency type deal. So I went to the emergency room and they did, I can't remember his CAT scan MRI. I think it was an MRI. But anyway, didn't have to go through the hubbub with the insurance and everything like that. It was just an emergency situation, I guess they, they think. And that's when they found out I had pretty severe dish. And the radiologist actually stated that. And I I got the report before I saw the doctor again, and I thought, what is this? Okay, dish, in parentheses, diffused idiopathic spinal uh, hyper I'm like, okay, sounds big. Don't much about it. So I have no idea. But I went, when I got my doctor's appointment back, he explained it all to me. And that's a scary thought. I mean, I, I felt like I could just fall over because it's it wasn't a good result. Um, and as he explained, and it turned out since then, I've seen the surgeon, I've seen rheumatology. Uh, my back is fusing. I mean, it's actually the bone, there's bone growth in between each, well, actually, spine, bone, spine, bone, spine, bone, spine, bone. There's no gaps. The, the normal kind is anterior, which is the inside of your spinal cord. That's normal. Okay, I mean, it's not normal. 80-year-olds, yeah, they usually get it in their neck. They're, you know, you've seen a lot of older people that can't, you know, they, they walk stiff neck. That's why. That's uh, pretty normal for somebody that old. But mine is both. When they told me it was both, I'm like, no, it can't be on the exterior side. And they go, yeah, yeah, it can be. And they, that's the worst kind. Unfortunately, that's where mine is. Uh, I ask them, how fast does this progress? And they said, well, that's the thing. That's when they explained to me the 14 years and with me, so far a matter of maybe, well, since I saw the surgeon on my back maybe four or five years ago, it's progressed that far to where right now I've got a very serious condition of it. I cannot get out an answer from them to find out if it keeps growing thicker, keeps growing up the spine, I, I can't get that answer from them because I really don't think they know, to tell you the honest truth. Uh, it is bone growth. Um, calcium, well, he told me what it was made up of, and he goes, let's just call it bone growth. It, it's easier. Um, but anyway, it just keeps going and going. And uh, I think what it does is just gets thicker. 
and I tried to find out how much of my spine is that over and they said they don't know because the MRI and CAT scans was only the lumbar and thoracic regions they didn't do the upper regions and the other ones I took on my neck didn't go down past this the cervical region so there's that area in between I can't even remember what they call between the thoracic and the, cer the cervical but hasn't been done but they assume it's there because they say the very top the t1 the thoracic one is severe and it they usually doesn't just stop with severe we're dead it doesn't do that so they imagine it's that matter of fact they said there's no sense even doing a scan of that part of the back because they pretty much know it's there so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not fun okay it's not fun so that's what anyway i thought i'd give you an update um progress this is not progress whatever it is is not good i mean yeah it's it, if it was in the neck it could be a life threat you really could uh and the neck is where you have a lot of you know brain function and stuff like that so i still don't have a brain but <laughs> But anyway, um, it's not in the neck, but I do have that stenosis that I have to worry about. And my doctor referred me right back to the surgeon for the stenosis in my neck. And well, also he found out there is a screw from the fusing of my neck that's pinging into one of the disc spaces. He said, that's probably where a lot of your pain's from. I go, okay. Called back my surgeon, couldn't get to him. Finally, after three or four days, I got to the nurse and she goes, let me read you the result. Da, 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 da. It's the stuff I already had. And I said, my doctor wants to know about that screw. She wa he wants me to have another appointment with you all and explain that to you so you could take a look. Oh, no, no, I don't think that's necessary. No, no, no. And pretty much hang up. It was a very, very short conversation. And the nurse was so rude. That is a very good hospital. I've always liked that hospital. But this office that he's in, it's on the eighth floor in Pikeville Medical Center. It houses, I know the rheumatology's up there, neurology's up there, neurosurgery's up there. And I think there's one more thing, but they're all gathered down two hallways. So there's nurses going everywhere. There's doctors going everywhere. There's Now they've got nurse practitioners going everywhere in there. So when you walk back in the hallways, you're like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I, I use my cane, I wanna knock him in the shins. I swear I do. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she acted like she was so busy, she didn't have time to deal with me. She was very rude. So I just thought, oh, whatever, you know, just, just whatever. So at least I don't have the dish in my neck. Um, I do have a lot of neck problems. I mean, that's with, with, with the swelling in my neck, there is a lot of, a lot of pain. Um, I'm more hunched over in my neck and upper shoulders than I am in my back. But I think that's what bothers me when I'm in my car seat. I mean, in the car, car seat, the seat in my car, that there's no, hardly any cushioning and it's trying to straighten that back out. So I've explained it to my, my wife. I'm getting kind of like curved. And when you lean against that car seat, it, tries to you know make it this way because you can't drive like this and i think that's what the problem is i spent went in with her yesterday morning i think we went into town we got there about eight o'clock by noon i'm done i'm hurting so bad oh man i'm hurting she had to bring me home which my idea was stay in town pretty much the big the biggest part of the day and I couldn't do it. I did last week and I really paid for it. The four hours that I did yesterday, I'm paying for it today. I paid for it last night severely. Today, I'm pretty much drugged up with that gabapentin, um, I, which, which I'm due to take right now, but I'm not gonna take it again. Uh, not today, maybe tonight. But 
anyway, that's where I'm at. I thought I'd give you an update for the people who watching this wanted to know. Um, what I'm going to do here on this channel today, I'm going to start working more on this cabin I was talking about. It's, it's very difficult. Uh, I, I needed something to keep me challenged, uh, to keep me going. Um, so I thought, I'm going to do a hard one. And this one is. I mean, if I was watching me, I'd probably think, what the heck is he doing? He gone back to kindergarten drawing? But anyway, uh, I have to get the foundation first, then I have to put in the details. And right now, I'm putting in the details to the cabin. I hope you're going to enjoy it. I hope you like it. And sorry for keeping you on here so long for this medical update. Uh, but here we go to the, uh, the painting. Thank you for watching and hope you subscribe.
getting pretty extreme. I'm having to lean over. Um, hopefully, I'll be back later on today. Do some more. Still not going the way I want it to. I hope this is not going to be a, another scratch product. Uh, I've got, already got two that I've scratched that someday I hopefully will get back on to. Um, this is not looking good. Um, but I'm going to keep on trying on it. Um, I'll see what I can do later with it. Thank you for watching Jasbo Simple Art, and I'll catch you later.